Washington from Power 102 Digital. It is Friday 19th, April 2024. Good morning, Trinidad and Tobago. This is News to 6 a.m. on News Power Digital. Three persons have been identified by the Pan American Health Organization, PAHU, who will form part of its team that will probe the premature deaths of 11 babies at the Port of Spain General Hospital. By the end of the month, the PAHU personnel are expected to be in this country. The update indicated by Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley while speaking yesterday at the post cabinet news briefing. Meanwhile, the Northwest Regional Health Authority has suspended the head of the infection prevention unit attached to the Port of Spain General Hospital. In a release, the NWRHA did not name the individual but said, quote, they shall proceed on administrative leave pending the conclusion of the relevant investigation into the demise of the seven neonates at the NICU unit during the period April 4th to 9th, 2024. Sources have subsequently identified Daryl Jones as the lead of the NWRHA's Infection Prevention Control Unit. The NWRHA said it may make further recommendations for suspension if deemed necessary to advance the investigation. The authority also advised it will make further statements as relates to the additional neonates for whom it had received pre-action protocol letters. The Board of Directors and Management of the NWRHA reiterated its commitment to transparency and accountability in respect of this difficult and painful situation and look forward to cooperating fully with the independent investigation. 19 trips aboard at a cost of $10 million defended by the government and revealed the travel was necessary to finalize key decisions relating to renewing energy contracts and other areas of national development. This from Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley as he told reporters during the question and answer period Trinidad Tobago will recover $18 billion because of renewed energy contracts, which have now been secured. And the Prime Minister announced yesterday that Cabinet has approved the change in the name for Emancipation Holiday. This August 1st, the new name will be African Emancipation Day. Dr. Rowley said the name, the time has come for us to make it quite clear what emancipation means, who is being emancipated. He said he noticed internationally that others were attempting to climb onto the emancipation bandwagon and attempting to add appendages to it. Dr. Raleigh said since Trinidad Tobago led the world in making emancipation their holiday, he wanted to make it clear that emancipation in Trinidad Tobago is a result of the emancipation of African slaves. He added, we are descendants of slaves. We have a duty to preserve our history, our legacy, and make our claim without any apologies to anyone. From foreign trips to energy matters, TNT is not immune to what goes on between Venezuela and America. This is the response from Dr. Raleigh to decisions by the U.S. to reimpose sanctions on Venezuela's vital oil sector. The move was taken over what the U.S. administration says is the government's failure to adhere to democratic principles ahead of elections in July. Over 99,000 cruise ship passengers paid a visit to Tobago since the opening of the season in November last year up to April this year. This described as a 56% increase in arrivals to Sister Isle Tobago. The figure made available by tour operators who work through the cruise ships. Uh, information is closed by the Tobago House of Assembly Secretary for Tourism and Culture, Tasha Burris. In news of the, region, of the region, Jamaica's government says it's yet to recover any of the funds that were swindled from more than 200 accounts at Fraud Hit Stocks and Securities Limited. However, it explains. Those who were aggrieved can pursue civil suits at any time. The accounts were impacted by fraud, including retired track and field star Usain Bolt. This week, Nigel Clark, Jamaica's finance minister, said about $30 billion was held in SSL's off-balance sheet portfolio on behalf of clients at the time of the fraud came to the public attention in January of 2023. And finally, the European Union wants to agree on a deal with Britain that would make it easier for people to between the ages of 18 and 30 to study and work abroad in the wake of Brexit. It would be a limited arrangement and not a restoration of free movement of people, the European Commission says. The UK already runs schemes with some non-EU countries to allow people to come to the UK for up to two years. And that is news to 6 a.m. right here on News Power Digital. We'd have major news coming away at 7 a.m. Good morning. Up to date and credible. 
Power 102 Digital. Good morning, neighbors. Good morning, neighbors. Good morning, neighbors. It is Friday. Yes, it is Friday, the 19th day of April. Good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us on the Paul Breakfast Show. Full cast in this morning, we just heard from Super Super Paul, Senator Dr. Paul Richards. We'll hear from Wendell Stephen, Richard Raghubar saying we got Ruben and Shade in the mix. My name is Steve Kahn. Uh, quickly, let's get into a little, uh, see what's happening on the highways and the byways. San Fernando, nothing to tell you about. Um, northbound, Solo, yeah, Chase Village towards Sugar Gornas, that main road is beginning to build. And Charlieville towards Interchange, a bit of volume. And volume is a swing left, and you'll get traffic from Barataria heading into Sport of Spain. All right, Trincita McCoy, a little volume there as well. 26 degrees at Piaco International Airport, 26 at Crown Point in Tobago. And, and let me just give you a quick weather update. We're expecting some rain today. Had some flooding in south yesterday. The Met Office is saying very cloudy conditions with light to moderate showers and a 40% medium chance of a few heavy showers, thunderstorms. All right, so please take note of that. Um, there is a moderate concentration of Sahara dust present in our atmosphere. I'm certainly feeling that this morning all right 26 degrees both islands and before i say hellos to my peeps let's say good morning going out to super paul morning steve good friday morning to everyone morning pal how you doing hope all is well not a, good a great night. night i had a very good sleep for some reason last night yeah boy that makes two of us i went to bed at nine i just couldn't make i i and i conked out I conked out, and then my alarm went off at 3.30, and I'm, I was totally confused. I had no idea what day it was. No idea, but it was a damn good sleep. Haven't had that in a long, long time. All right, let's see who sent us hellos first thing this morning via Facebook and YouTube. Lots of messages coming in. God Celia, Oliver Man Warren, Boy Bedesi, Wayne B. Still in Trin City. Hope you're having a great vacation, Wayne B. CJ out in New York, Wendy and James, Rena Budu Jennings, Riri out in West Palm Beach, Florida, Matthew Rock in Orlando, Sasha out to London, uh, Adrian Koto, good morning, uh, from the Boomerang team, uh, DJ Ray out in Tampa, D. Pierre, Nakish up here, Maria Celia, Josie Richardson, Huda Wells, Gloria Gray, and Gloria says good morning to Andrew. And Andrell, uh, Sedena out in South Oropooch. Anthony Tinto out in Canada. Um, Marsha Polony, good morning to you as well. Let me just quickly check to see what we got on WhatsApp. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. I have Sankofa. I have GNC Auto Security. Um, I have um, Dan Raj. And I've got... Um, Ken Wim. All right. Good morning to you as well. Evans David, you just snuck in. All right. So good morning to you as well. Right. Of course, you two can send us a message um, via WhatsApp at 3181021. And welcome to those that are joining us and watching us on television on Flow Channel 111, Digicel Channel 20, Amplia Channel 117. All right. Good morning to you, Wendell Stephen. Hi. Morning, morning, Steve. Morning, Paul. Good morning, uh, Trinidad and Tobago. And good morning, listeners and viewers all over the globe. A special birthday greeting to Derek Tomasas, a.k.a. Kush from Arima. Happy birthday, Derek. I'm sure that you're listening. And I hope you and your wife have a fantastic day today. Well, I know that she will treat you special. All right. Mm. Uh, so happy birthday to Derek Tomasas. Right. I didn't get to wish Roy Cape happy birthday yesterday. I think he was 82 years old yesterday. Yeah, Roy Cape was this week. Happy, yeah. happy belated birthday. Yeah, his birthday was yesterday. And Minister Paula Gopi Schoon's birthday also was yesterday. Oh. Along with Katie, a.k.a. Uh, well, Richard Robinson, a.k.a. Oh, his birthday was this week? His birthday was yesterday also. Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Marcus Clark, the son of Dean Nolly Clark, he also celebrated her birthday yesterday. And a good friend of mine, Maya Ali, she also celebrated her birthday yesterday. All right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Missed out on all of those yesterday. All right? So belated birthday greetings to you all. Mm-hmm. I right, know. Don't forget, we are live on channel one 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 eleven on Flow on, on Flow TV and channel twenty on Digicel TV. All right, we are live. And Amplia one one seven. Oh, we have an Amplia two one one seven. Okay, yeah. I didn't know that. All right, so you can catch us on Facebook Live, on YouTube, YouTube. Live, and on three different channels live now from six to eight on. A morning, weekday morning. All right, you can't get better than that. I don't think there's any other media house with that kind of coverage. Not so, Paul. I, I doubt don't... very much. No, I don't think there is. I don't think there is. I am trying to bring up a picture of a young man. Mm -hmm. Um, who? Let me see. I'm not, not bring up the wrong pictures. <laughs> you know you want pictures. I'm don't bring up the wrong pictures. Let me let me just let me just play it safe. Yeah, but don't you normally have those type of pictures in a separate folder anyway? No, not necessarily. No. You mix them up with all the other pictures? Yes, I do. My God, no. So his name is 14 years old. I'll get his name, his picture up just after seven o'clock mm -hmm. when news is you know, and I'll, I'll download it into another program. But I wanted to take time to congratulate 14-year-old 14, 14 Leon Reyes. He's a Form 1 student of Five Rivers Secondary School who was running errands for his grandmother when he came across a wallet on the pavement outside Maloney Mall. Mm -hmm. The wallet contained $400 in cash, bank cards, credit cards, and other personal documents. Young Leon took the wallet to the Maloney police station and handed the wallet over to officers who tracked down the owner. And there's a picture of Leon handing over the wallet to a police officer. And I think we need to congratulate this young man mm -hmm. because there's so many pictures of young men and he's a young black man. I make no apologies for saying that mm -hmm. who are being apprehended by police. And this young man is clearly brought up well, is very honest. And not only found the wallet, but took the time to take it to the police station so that the owner could get back the wallet. So congratulations to 14-year-old Leon Reyes, his parents, and his caregivers for raising such an honest young man. I'll get a picture of later. Mm -hmm. Good morning, Raghu Singh. And, and I think it, it's important for us to highlight these things. Very important. Very oh, important. definitely. That's some great news to start off with, Paul. Hi, good morning, guys. And good morning to our listeners and viewers, wherever you are across the planet. Rez is our Arima name, so I'm not surprised that it's an Arima. <laughs> why is it? Why? Is that, I'm trying to bring up the picture, but you know, my stuff. What is this? <laughs> Just be careful, for My stuff can be overwhelming sometimes. I don't want to overwhelm it, overwhelming it with anybody, you know? All right. Well, if anybody has a picture of Leon Reyes, send it to. I have a picture. You have the picture, but yeah, but yours is mixed up with all the other pictures. It have some decent people out there who just have decent pictures in. Like me. <laughs> I'm just saying it, getting it out there. Ay. Ay, ay, ay. Let me see. Come on. Oh, Leon, we could get this picture up. Is he from Arima? I was just guessing. Huh? He, might be he, from seems from, he seems to be from the Maloney area. I know Rez is a, a very much an Arima name. There are a lot of Rez in Arima. So I just assumed. I don't know why this thing is not. Anyway, I'll get this picture up. I have another way of getting the picture up to ensure that no other pictures are displayed in that process. Send the meetings up tremendously. Yeah, we, could, we don't want to see a picture of Zina at all. Let me send it. Um. Another piece of good news that making the wrongs, of course, and, and well, maybe send we could be the subject of our poll today is the name change from Emancipation Day to African Emancipation Day. I tell that already. 
You type it up already, yeah. Long time. <laughs> I figured it would be a good poll today. That type since 4 o'clock this morning. Right. <laughs> yes, I've, I've Emancipation Day as of August 1st, 2024 will be known as African Emancipation Day. Uh, the cabinet took that decision yesterday and mm -hmm. it was announced at the post-cabinet meeting yesterday. Steve, um, is there a particular reason why you send the picture to me? You say you can find it, so I send it to the easy access. You said I couldn't bring it up without bringing up other pictures. So, oh, so, so, you can borrow one. You can borrow one of the blue pills from Wendell. So yes, the name changes to African Emancipation Day, mm -hmm. which was announced by the Prime Minister yesterday. Yes, yes. I'm not surprised. In, in the Senate on Tuesday, um, Minister Hines mm -hmm. was answering a question. And I, I did. I, I listen very carefully to to to. to I, know, I want to say these people, but politicians in general sometimes. Mm -hmm. And somebody said something across the floor, and Mr. Ha Minister Hines was quick to interject and say that should be African Emancipation Day. Okay, you hear me? That's interesting. So he let the cat out of the bag. Well, I didn't let the cat out of the bag, but he said that. Mm -hmm. So clearly, he he was privy to the discussion. Of the cabinet that made the decision, which he's part of the cabinet, so one would expect. Oh, he that. Is. Yeah. You know, so I said, okay. So when they, when they let the little thing slip, you hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I told you about the two replacements on the on the on the um, committees earlier in the week. Remember, I told you about that. Right, right. And those things that you do them, they don't slip past me. Good morning, Raghu Basing. How are you this morning? I am good. I'm good. I'm good. I don't know why you're so quiet. Me? Um, no, I just had um, to navigate a little something here while I was driving. He didn't want so, to go but I was just... was... <laughs> well, You no, no, drive no. like you're driving Miss Daisy, Richard. Well, you need to navigate. It is. No, there was, a, you know, sometimes they have these little police things. So I was little trying to keep quiet. What's a little police thing? I should know about little police things, but you shouldn't know about that. Yeah, that's quite a revelation. That's, what little police? What little police thing are you talking about? That you have to navigate. Yeah. Did my strips come across clearly? Not, no, <laughs> no, it did not. I got to say I, something, yeah, but yeah, I was going to say well, something I, myself. I but in real yeah. trouble for that. <laughs> because that yeah. person is no longer police. Anyway, the Northwest Regional Health <laughs> Authority. <laughs> let me let me. Take it's because it's I can't be laughing when I'm reading mm. this. Has suspended head of the infection prevention control unit attached mm. to the Port of Spain General Hospital. The authority made a release yesterday. They did not name the person, but the person has been identified according to Guardian sources as Daryl Jones. He's yeah, I hear my noise body. from Richard to, to hear what you say. Lead of the NWRH's infection prevention control unit. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know Daryl Jones at all. I don't I know that name at all. You wouldn't need to know another that. high profile person. He high profile now. Hmm. No, but you know, in a small island, sometimes you just happen to know people. people yeah, the name is not familiar, but the face is familiar. It's not familiar. Oh, there's a face? Yeah, the, it's in the front page of the Guardian. The board of directors and the management of NWRH reiterated its commitment to transparency and accountability in respect to this difficult and painful situation and look forward to cooperating fully with the independent investigation. Well, somebody learned something. The face something. is kind of familiar. The face is kind of familiar, right? Clearly, somebody learned something about effective communication from their last posting. Well, the baby deaths are good thing you ever have, there. No, I'm not talking about there. I'm talking about the, the board of directors and management. They, they, oh, you, see how, you see how effectively the, the NWRG communicated now that they should have done since the, the beginning of the month. Well, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. communication caused another debacle in a in another space, or or poor communication. So the, so there's clearly an emphasis on effective communication now regarding the situation and one of the front page pictures also in the newspapers is a really heartbreaking picture of parents of um i think the twins if i'm not mistaken or, or one of the children mm -hmm. 
and you could see the distressed nature as one would expect on the faces of these parents who lost their child. Um, I saw a lot of bantering on social media yesterday, um, identifying this suspension as the start of scapegoating. Is he a doctor? No, I don't think so. He didn't say he's a doctor. Mm -hmm. I didn't get the impression he was a doctor, but he wasn't identified as a doctor. I wonder how long has he, he has, has he been there at that head, no. head of that event? One would imagine that he'd be placed under a lot of pressure in recent times, eh? Mm -hmm. Because there was an infection that's seemingly spread from one neonate to, if you are, if you believe all they are connected to as many as ten others including two pairs of twins so it is a tragic situation yeah mm -hmm. um the prime minister also um <laughs> so um i don't know that. but again we were getting that i think it's akash samaru uh challenged the prime minister yesterday before he asked the question saying that you know he just wanted to identify to the prime minister that um very often there are ministers that that uh ask questions and the questions never are answered or the questions they in abeyance and and in one instance he identified minister Imbus threatening to block reporters and then our own former gregory mcburney chimed in and said um yes yeah, some of those ministers emails are places where questions go to die <laughs> oh jeez gregory <laughs> we clearly trained him well yeah we did we have a special course in sarcasm in this company <laughs> it's a two week intensive led by Avril St. Hill Bob. Oh, yes. It is yes. taught yes. by Avril St. Hill Bob. Hold on, uh, uh, Paul, it's Professor. Professor Avril St. So Hill Bob. So, what the Prime, Prime Minister Prime said, what the Prime Minister he, said to uh, he, the Department he, Ministers would answer. He gave a proper response. He said, if these ministers are doing that, they're in the wrong business. If you are refusing to communicate with media, you're in the wrong business. Of course, that was a kind of tummy cheek. Yeah. To somebody too. <laughs> yeah, but but men is saying, but is no is no stranger to that type of behavior. Yeah. So I, I had a I had a personal I had a personal run in with him once once. Well, you understand? Well. When I asked him about an interview, he said, Where do you work again? I said, Power to He said, Well, he put up his hand like that at me. But he no came on several weeks ago and mm. he had he had some commitments that he had to cancel, and I've been trying to get him back on. Uh, but who's fact, this you're trying to get on, Minister Ember? Oh, okay. Election soon, election soon come. I always tell them that, you know. Yeah, election soon take, come. Take 10 and points. Then it, it'll be what? Hello, what, Wendell? Hmm. Steve, we in addition to streaming we're on TV you now, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> election you know soon come. okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so the prime minister said if they are members of his cabinet. Who are reluctant to interface with the media then the wrong business of course i'm paraphrasing and he's absolutely right mm -hmm. politics means you need if if you are smart anyway a smart politician you can't judge the media even in difficult times face it yeah yeah, yeah. you understand that's yeah. part of your job better be, yeah better to be accessible but, and, but he, uh, he threw that uh, in somebody garden to him well, the, the opposition leader has never made herself available to the media. That's not true. At, at least, pre, at least, at least a wide, 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 the wider I, media. I appreciate the caveat. Yeah, the wider media. She has never made she herself, didn't make herself available to. Over she, isn't that so? Yeah, some some or, PR campaign. What seemed to be a, 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 a pre-recorded interview. It was a yeah. pre-recorded interview. We've had a couple. Of We've had her a couple of times on the show, even no, though I think the last time not since 2015. We have had her once. We, we, we had last time we had her was when Rhoda was here. We had yeah. her once, not since 2015. I, I will let you all know that her birthday is on Monday. Who's yes, birthday? Her birthday is coming. I'm not for Okay, good, good for her. Monday, yes. 22nd, right? Yeah. Yes, I remember her birthday because Rhoda is the 21st, I think. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I think so. Rhoda said to tell both of you all, I actually, she came to the um, show 
um, unlike any of you all who are my colleagues, she no, no, came no. to the show. Hold on, 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 and no answer. Yeah, but no, you well, did, that you, didn't, didn't you just hmm. say, Rula, say that, to say hello to both of us? There's three of us here. No, what I meant to the team. Sorry, to the team. Oh, okay. She said she does watch. She, she said she does watch the show from time to time. Um, you, you know, like after when when people watch the YouTube videos and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So she said she does watch. You know, from time to time. He was born at fourteen years. Yeah, yeah, but she said, but she said she totally enjoyed the show because she came backstage and we spoke for a while now. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen her in a while, mm -hmm. and she said she she was so glad she came out. She said Ricardo harassed her, harassed her to come out, and she said you know sometimes she just doesn't go out, and she came out. She kind of forced herself to come out, and she said she was so glad she made that decision that she just needed the laughter. She said the play is so funny. Right. And she had such a wonderful time. And in case you're wondering what place I'm talking about, it's, it's really Love really is a Walk. <laughs> Love is a Walk, which is on at Cipriani <laughs> College this weekend, Saturday at 8 30 p.m. and Sunday at 6 30 p.m. And you should get your tickets early because we expect to have packed houses this weekend at Cipriani College. And of course, the Cipriani College box office is open from 12 noon to 6 p.m. daily. And of course, we have tickets at all our usual outlets. You can check RSRR Productions Theatre on social media for more information. But, Barrett, in Barrett, 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 used by Richard Ragu Wendell, <laughs> Wendell, you want to do yours now? And then Steve? Oh, God. Boxes at one to the Stephanie Western Main, what did say, James? Yeah. Um, we cater to a wide range of palates. You understand whether alcoholic or non-alcoholic? Steve? Yeah. My turn. And of course, the pet butler, is on El Socorro Main Road and Mirage Street. We are fully stocked up with all the accessories, your food and your accessories for all pets. We don't sell pets, so come on by. Today, Dr. Gooding from Pet Oasis will be in this afternoon by appointment only. So you can call 610-8725 to bring your fur baby in, all right? And El Socorro is not that far from Cipriani College because you pass it on your left if you're coming from West Trinidad and you will see Cipriani College on the highway just after you pass the Aranguez flyover and the Southern flyover. Can you bring any fur baby? <laughs> you can have you your own fur baby, yeah? No, I want to bring Zena. If you could bring any for baby. Now, let me bring, I'll bring Janelle Penny Commission, who's watching us right now and says, Morning, guys. Hi, so I'll, that'll be my fur baby. How is that? Hi, Penny. Yeah. Morning, Penny. Hi, Penny. I'm morning, Penny. But Rhoda looked good. Let's get him back to Rhoda. But Rhoda looked good and she did say hi to tell you all hi. And, um, and, but, and she had a wonderful time. And so we spoke for a while. Well, good while actually. I think it's her birthday this weekend here. I think she's born. I think she's April twenty yeah. first, if I remember. I think uh, she's either the day before Mrs. Posadi says so, or the same day. Ironic. Yeah. Oh, okay. Prime Minister Dr. Paul, hold on. announced yesterday that the cabinet has approved the name change for the Emancipation Day holiday. Mm -hmm. This August first, the name will, the new name will be African Emancipation Day. Yeah, I, I, I heard that. I that's a good poll to have. We have already typed yeah. it. Is so oh, you all took my idea and ran with it then, because I I'm now saying that you have to try to pretend now that you you're taking my idea and you had it before. Is that what you're saying, Paul? Well, well he doesn't pretend to take mine because when I started it this morning, he said I haven't typed up since four from this morning. So what? I, you that I, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Open quotation. The time has come. You all this morning. I don't know what tablet you all take last night, but you all very energetic this morning. The time has come. We got good sleep. To make it quite clear what emancipation means and who is being emancipated, 
not right. It was unclear before. He noticed. Actually, it may have been unclear before. Um, he noticed internationally that others were attempting to climb onto the emancipation bandwagon and attempting to add appendages to it. Yeah. He so. referenced he referenced something about that as to why the why what prompted. I suspect too the visit of the Asante King last year too for our eman for emancipation may have also had a role to play in that um, name change. And and the fact that he's going to Ghana on May 8th. Oh, he's going to Ghana? Yes. I guess? In two oh. weeks. Yeah. Oh, I didn't he's know going that. to Ghana. He was invited by ahead. the Asante King to celebrate. I think it's the thirtieth anniversary of his ascendancy. Right if I'm not mistaken. Oh, oh, that will be a big thing. That will be a big thing. So he um he said um the countries he said you know he said many may not understand why these types of trips are important. Of course, throwing a little rock at someone there, but they're important for many different reasons. And he also said he's going on some other trip. But I forget. Mm. So that Ghana trip will be epic. I better, call, I better call my people in Ghana. Or oh, he them. said he, he also said that he was invited to India because um, Reliance Industries Limited, a local private investor, and the government are in discussions. Uh, Reliance Industries and local interests approached the cabinet with a proposal that could have a lasting positive implication. And the article has a picture of the old Pantry and Bigo Trin City site. Mm -hmm where it seems they may be looking at a regional cricket center, uh, Reliance is India's largest private sector corporation owned by Mukesh Ambani, that's the man who Rihanna performed for his son the other day. Yeah. yeah. Uh, reportedly, Asia's richest person, Reliance also owns five-time Indian Premier League T20 champions, the Mumbai Indians, through its subsidiary, India Wind Sports Private Limited. So I think the... the I'm not sure. Yeah, it's supposed to be like a cricket academy. And and in the news last night, they said that uh, the an architect, I think, has already visited the site. And they are in the, the, the planning stages of drawing up how they think it will, um, it will look. Um, I, I am so for, I am so for something being done with that property because it's an ISO on the highway in yeah. Eastern Trinidad. So, you know, I hope really that something happens there. I, I, it didn't escape me of the political astuteness of Dr. Rowley in right after mentioning the uh, trip to Ghana, the invitation from India. To India. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know the environment we're in. He good like that. He good like oh, that. Oh, yeah. He's very, very aware of the political yeah. environment. He knows what to juxtapose next to what. Yeah. So he so he could shut up the old talk one time. Yes, yes. <laughs> because your news will generate old talk. Yes, 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 yes. Right. Anyway. Hmm. But the, the big story continues to dominate the, the news is of course the really tragic situation involving um, those babies that died. Eleven. You know, and now the development that the head of the uh infection protection unit has been placed on administrative leave pending the conclusion of the relevant investigations and that PAHO personnel are expected in the country by the end of the month. Three of those of that PAHO team has have already been identified. Mm -hmm. You know, I was in a barbershop and, yesterday. And they're, coming, and they're coming into the country in, in like today and tomorrow or something like that? No, the news yeah, yeah. are says by the end of the month. They have been identified already. Three of the team. team oh, okay, team. I don't know why I thought they were like um en route basically okay i saw the minister of health and member of parliament for saint joseph terence de Alsing, started a, a a series on the history of saint joseph mm -hmm. you know that didn't happen by yes right no oh, he right. sent it for me he, he also sent it for me but there was an error in it. I, I, I didn't really want to point it out to him. So, because he, um, he said St. Joseph was the first capital of Trinidad and Tobago. That's not correct. Why is that not correct? It, because it, it was the first capital of Trinidad. Tobago wasn't that. I appreciate the nuance. Yeah, I, I, when I saw it, I said, I said, look, let me just leave it. It's a small bit. thing. Yeah. Um, so I see, so I saw he started to do this, um, this series. 
uh, which suggests to me he's he's uh, it's a kind of what I call it, should I call it campaigning? Could be. Yeah, it, it, seemed, be. To, it seemed to be um, subtle campaigning. You know, mm. it's it's not uh, lost to us that the election is a year to eighteen months away, mm. and all of a sudden the series starts. I think it's a good idea. You know, um, I hope body going about. Um, exploring the if he if he is if he is serious about winning that seat again, he needs to do something with Mendoza Street in Mount Hope, oh, which he which he had indicated to me in an interview was very well paved, and it absolutely is not well paved. It is terrible, terrible. I can tell you all the votes he have on that street that he had before ain't coming in twenty twenty five unless that street is paved. That is a bunch so, of yeah, a bunch of yeah. we're gonna vote anyway. <laughs> I, I, but I just tell you, you, you didn't hear what I just tell you? I say if you want those votes, you better make sure that road is paved. Mendoza Street in Moncto. So is it still it is that, so terrible? Is it, still that it is still that way, Wendell. It is terrible. Oh, oh, terrible, terrible. I hope when he's going to he's calling the, the virtues of St. Joseph that he encounters some of those issues and fixes them. He's your MP too, not so, Paul? Yes, he is. Okay. And possibly Steve's. Steve is not Baratay, yes, no? Is he? I know he, bo he borders somewhere there, right? He might very well be Baratay, yes, no? You know, I think he may be Baratay, yes, no? mm -hmm. If I'm not mistaken. Well, well, he, he's well he's not there. He could go ahead and vote for Saddam. Let him go ahead. <laughs> you tell him who to vote. Oh, you tell him who to vote for. That's all right. He's not a wrong, so I can say that. Oh my God, that the man vote for who he want now. <laughs> you tell him the man who to vote for. <laughs> I was about to tell you all. I don't know. Trinidadians always know somebody who knows somebody. I was in the barber shop yesterday, and of course, one of the barbers. You know, somebody always knows somebody who knows somebody. Yeah. And one of the barbers in the shop was explaining of course the discussion started about this child who um who was decapitated it's so difficult for me to say just to say it's difficult for me to say honestly but you can say her name you know amara lalit it's just, it's just yeah amara lalit let me let me take that route because it's just such a difficult thing to say and one of the babas was saying he lives three houses from where the mother lives mm -hmm. and that the woman, the, the, uh, Amara's mother, um, had had some issues before. And he was saying that the the family has, some, some members of the family had a history of mental challenges and that the man in the house had uh, displayed erratic behavior in the neighborhood for some time. You, you know, Paul, did you, did you all, I don't know if you all got to listen, and people don't ask me to send it to you eh, because I'm not going to send it. Listen to those so some voice notes, recordings apparently that the woman would have done mm -hmm. by speaking with the man. I got one. Yes. And he was trying yeah, Paul to said he was, Paul said he was going to play it for our audience, but he didn't come through on it. Well, I listened to those things, eh? And I'm saying you can't surely, I mean, some not everybody could tell when they're in the presence of someone who's just generally who's could be considered unstable. But I listen to that those those voice notes, and I'm saying, no, something is wrong. This, despite the fact that I think he was also being provoked, you understand? Because I think she knew she was recording him, you understand? So she would have been telling him certain things to provoke a certain response. I'm saying clearly because something is not right, and you could have, he listen and hear that something is just not right with that with, with, with that person. But from, what, I, from the one I heard. A level of she actually right? seemed to be talking him down from an irrational thought process, mm -hmm. you know. And yeah. but the, the person the barbershop was saying that he had a history of erratic behavior. So, so let me let me play devil's advocate here. Mm -hmm. How, what is the responsibility? And, and this is a really difficult question, but what is the responsibility, or where does a community? draw a line in terms of intervention because if you know that somebody is erratic and you know that a child is in the presence of that person which you must know if you're in a community setting 
-hmm. is there a duty on the community to report same to the children's authority or is there a duty not to be involved be because you can't assess mental health issues someone clarify someone clarify my colleagues and he said clarify the people there is a presumption that the law indicates that people have a legal obligation general public that is to report when children are in danger they have a moral obligation but i think it's only teachers in schools and certain state environments that there's a legal obligation to report when a child is in danger mm -hmm. and i think one of one of my colleagues is actually supposed to bring a motion to have that law amended soon yeah so that every member of the public is legally obligated to report when they i when it has come to the attention that a child may be in danger but richard but, to answer your question directly who, mm -hmm. who determines what is erratic behavior well paul i want to add i want to uh, um, answer richard in this way because i think if you listen if you get the chance to listen to the voice notes richard the voice recordings richard you may come to the conclusion that that the person the, the woman and, and 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 i know that this could rub some people the wrong way knew and was she was aware clearly she was aware that something wasn't right and that something was wrong with him because she was saying it in the recording you understand i agree that, i agree that, with that wendell because yeah. she was saying she was she was trying to explain to him that his thought process wasn't rational yeah. and in one instance she was saying well the little girl will follow you because you're a father figure to her yeah you understand because he was claiming he was claiming fatherhood of, of a child that he only knew when she was 11 or, or something so you know and so and she was saying no she's not your child you met me with her you know and so there were signs there were well, clear you signs see, you see there's a we have to understand signs to pe people have different interpretation of what behavior should be particularly when you normalize mm -hmm. behavior in, in 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 your presence because there are people who even normalize abuse yeah yeah so we could say now after the fact that she should have and she should have yeah. but when you one when you may be yourself a victim of abuse or you may have normalized some sort of behavior that may not fall within what some people's determination that is what whatever normal means you understand it is easy in retrospect to say she should have and she should have i but guess we don't know, I we guess don't know if she if well this was a an episode that she had an a, 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 an attempt to calm because everybody in their families will will say well this person acted erratically at some point and they seem to be on the edge and unless there's a, a qualified diagnosis me, me, uh, done yeah. who's to say you understand but she did say that he was never violent before she did say that he was he has never displayed violent tendencies before but well, I, I because he was pretty calm and collected and well spoken in that in that voice recording. Well, again, one of this what people describe because this country has had to go through an evolution of thinking where abuse is concerned. Mm -hmm. People feel violence is only physical. Yes. Well, let me say a lot of people feel violence is only physical. You understand? So her interpretation of abuse and violence may be different to what you think it is. True. So he may have been very abusive verbally and emotionally and she may have normalized that correct you know so it, it, there's a lot of, that goes on behind that that we that under the engine that we have to take into consideration Richard do you have any papers yes I do I didn't play back the arm for that snarky remark you made earlier because I couldn't find it on my phone for some reason I may have deleted it in error when if you have it and you'd like to send it to me I'd appreciate that so that this individual who threw that snarky comment earlier can be appeased which one of them what what snarky remark did i make when well, Paul promised to play it and he didn't play it oh that's a factual statement that's not snarky. that was said that was delivered in a snarky manner <laughs> and you have thousands of listeners who can verify that you said that so let's, it's a change, let's change the poll. Was Richard snarky to Paul? <laughs> That's your problem. You like to change. You like to change Paul too much. You don't do it, Nancy. What happened? I've been. So, <laughs> just go to the papers now. Hey, no answer. Before I can't cover this morning. 
I can I can start with a news day. And of course today is April 19th and it's D-Day before Love is a Walk to Premiers at Cipriani College, which is on tomorrow at 8 30 at Sunday at 6 30. Get your tickets early. Trust me on this, people. Trust me on this particular play. Get your tickets early. But anyway, the front page of the um, news day today. Uh, PM, TT to get new cricket academy. That's the main headline. Um, the uh, sub-headlines, attorneys ask about baby move to NICU before deaths. Um, that's also a sub-headline on the front page of the Newsday this morning. And on the back page of the Newsday, uh, well, you have two main, uh, well, there's one main headline. Um Injured Fatima forward focused on pro football dream and shaves. I don't know if shaves that's how you pronounce it. Shaves Alexander top SSFL awards that's on the back page of the newsday. Also, Rowley no influence on the Ryan's return. Um, so that's the front and the back of the newsday. Moving along to the Daily Express today. What's the headline? I'm about to tell you. Doctor suspended. That's the Atlanta Day Express went with N W. So he is a doctor. Yeah, doctor. yeah Doctor Daryl Jones, um, head of infection prevention and control at N W R H E, has been suspended. He's been put on administrative leave. N W R H E sends head of infection prevention and control unit on leave pending probes into babies' deaths. Um, Rowley Kamla spent millions more on trips. And it's Dr. Rowley in a familiar pose with finger up in the air. And Emancipation Day renamed African Emancipation Day. Cambon disagrees. And on the back page of the Express, and on the back page of the Express, Charles in charge of Spinner puts Red Force on top against Scorpions. So, uh, and Matthew Stamps class on first ODI. So that's it for the front and the back of the Daily Express. On to the Trinidad and Tobago Guardian. The Guardian front page. Baby death probe, probe at Port of Spain General Hospital, NICU, sent on leave. That's the headline. Infection prevention had removed amid investigation. NWRHE. Oh, just now, eh? Yes, NWRHA board says suspension suspensions could follow so that there could be more suspensions or more people sending administrative leave. Also reviewing new complaints made by parents. Um, sub headline PM defends his overseas trips. Um, em Emancipation Day gets name change. And on the back page, Matthews slams 140 in West Indies win. So that's it for our three days this morning. All right. Thank you so much, Richard. What, I am Richard, now finished. What was that story about Dr. Rowley? Y'all can Twitter? continue. Richard? Okay, play all the games. Richard? Go ahead, Wendell. What was that story about Dr. Rowley with Sunil Narayan? Is he there? All right. All right. Well, let's get the result. Yeah, I, was, I didn't hear what you said, Randall. Say it again. No, I was asking you what yeah. was that story headline you read about Dr. Rowley and Sunil Narayan? Okay, I finally got it done. That's, I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure what the story is about. I just read the headline. I didn't read the story. Okay, all right. Okay. I, I need to find out. It's a, it's a it's a sub headline. Mm -hmm. And and I promise you, the picture of the young man who did that good deed. This is Leon Rez. Congratulations, right. Leon. Very honest young man. Nice man. Who returned the wallet to the police, which he found with money and credit cards and bank cards. And so good on you, young man. Keep up the good work. Yeah, you have a good great picture. picture ahead good of you. picture too. I don't know why the police hand where it is, but good picture. And well, Cambon is saying that we didn't need to change of name. I'm not so sure why, Wendell. Yeah, I, 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 listen. It's time for some the emancipation support committee to have elections. 
So the question this morning is, all right, well, gentlemen, let me get the results of our morning poll from yesterday. All right, so our poll yesterday was, do you think the Ministry of Health, the Minister of Health, Terence Yeltsin, should resign as a result of the deaths of the babies at the Port of Spain General Hospital? That was our poll yesterday. Final results are in. 59%, 5-9 said no, should not resign. All right. Okay. This morning's poll, Paul, let's put it up. Do you agree with the change to African Emancipation Day as approved by the Cabinet of Trinidad and Tobago? Do you agree with that? Yes or no? 222-8255, toll free. North Americans, 866-525-1099. You can WhatsApp us at 318-1021. And of course, good morning to all those watching us on your know, television, on Flow. But he's four much. And did he sell no, channel 20 and Amplia 117? What's up, Richard? He's former chairman he, of the Emancipation he, Support Committee. Yeah, he's former chairman of the Emancipation Support Committee. I was trying to get a sense. Uh, I was trying to get a sense of why he why he would have um why he does not see it as necessary. So what I went to him for? Go to the head, go to some young person. Well, I mean, but he's a citizen Wendell and he has been involved in emancipation day, so um he so said uh, um former chairman of the emancipation support committee of Trinidad Tobago, Kafra Cambon, also who had lobbied for emancipation day as a national holiday said society was already aware that the holiday was rooted in African history and the African community. Speaking with the experts by telephone, he said Emancipation Day had national and international appeal. Gambit said of the decision to rename the holiday, I would not have uh, gone for it. If they do it, they do it, they do it. If they do it, they do it. I like things that add value. I did not even know a decision was made. I know there were discussions. I don't think anybody who has been associated with the decision wants it to be seen as exclusionary. I don't think anybody did it with the intention of saying it's only for African Indians. The whole country knows it's rooted in African history. It's well established as Emancipation Day. Yes. There was there, there was never any confusion in anybody's mind as to what celebration, what the celebration is about. It has always been associated with and about the African community. It's totally understood. It's a national celebration about a commemoration of emancipation of Africans. It has been that way ever since. It's Maybe about it's my history <laughs> and I relate to it. So that's kind of like what he's saying, basically. Maybe, maybe we should read what the Prime Minister had to say about it. Gentlemen, we have to read some votes that are coming in. So let's do that by yeah. time and we get into some of it. Um, all right. The CJ had said yes to the poll. Um, the people who are voting are not talking earlier and they need to re vote. Eh? Uh, Wendell, by the way, you have to, um, you'll have to count. No problem. Yeah. Michael Gradison out in Japan says yes. Um, Alistair Hart says yes. Michael, well, you got that ready. Jean Clark says yes. Josie Richardson says yes. Wayne Joseph out in Ontario, Canada says yes. Joe Sam says yes. Um, let's see. Tre Trevor Arima says yes. Um, Yeah, I got another one here. We got in some traffic in the south. All right. Do you agree with the name change to African Emancipation Day as approved by the Cabinet of Trinidad and Tobago? Yes or no? Call us, WhatsApp us, Facebook, YouTube. You know what to do. Good morning. Good morning, gentlemen. Yes, and there is another holiday need to fix too. Arrival day. Well, it's already in the arrival day. All right. Thank you. Unless you want to change back to arrival day, I'm not sure yeah. what you ask. Good morning. Yes, 
Good morning. I mean, I don't know what is the name change. I I I, I find out later that I just came to in here. Let's talk about what is the what's the name change. It's changed from Emancipation Day to African Emancipation Day. Okay. Okay. So do you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. African yes. Emancipation Day. Yes, that is more. Yes, I prefer that. That 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 is good. That is very good. All right. Right. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, Julia S. Batiste says yes. Rena Budu Jennings says yes. Carol Guevara says yes. Adrian Kutu says yes. Finbar Collins totally agree. Win B in Trin City says yes. Do you agree with the name change to African Emancipation Day as approved by the Cabinet of Trinidad and Tobago? Yes or no? 222-8255. North Americans, toll free. 866-525-1099. On WhatsApp at 318-1021. Um, of course, uh, Anne-Marie on WhatsApp says yes. Um, I have got um, Gloria Charles Panton saying yes to the hey, poll. Gloria. Hey, good morning, Gloria. Um, you have Michael Grandison saying yes. That's yeah. Sankofa. And Cheryl Henry says yes. Maria. Good morning, caller. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Trevor in Georgia, yes. Trevor in Georgia. Thank you, Trev. Have a good day. All right. Um, Cynthia Ramsarup says agree. Viani Warwood says yes. Caller, good morning. Good morning. You all use a phrase on the station a lot. No hanging fruit. And I want to agree with Captain Cameron. It makes no difference one way or another. It is already established. But that is just so a your answer to the poll would be say. yes or no? I would abstain from that vote. It makes no sense. All right. I well, you, do, you know, when, you, you get, when the decisions are, are, are not made, we have a problem with it. When they're made, we still have a problem with it. This decision was made. It's African people who were enslaved. It's African people who were emancipated. Let the people vote. What are you trying to talk to people well, vote, vote for? The vote done, the vote done people done. have the right to their opinion. What you carrying I, on I, did I Did I stop them from speaking? But you're, you're carrying on in the middle of the vote. No. I saying what I feel I, I, I want to say. You're trying to shut me up. You're trying to enslave me. You're trying to <laughs> mute me. What are you trying to do? I'm I'm emancipated in a poll. Yeah, sometimes you don't <laughs> seem so. <laughs> Freedom. Sometimes, sometimes you seem to be in emotional Freedom. bondage. Nah, Garvin okay. Jordan sometimes. on WhatsApp. Good morning to you. Garvin. Where are you messaging us from? He says yes. All right. <laughs> Gavin Jones, did you say? Jordan. Jordan, okay. Yeah. Do you agree with the name change to African Emancipation Day as approved by the Cabinet of Trinidad and Tobago? Yes or no? That is what it should have been in the first place. It, I think Gavin Emancipation Jordan Day was actually New York done under Pass Day Pande, right? <clears throat> Good morning, Paula. Good morning, caller. Good morning, gentlemen. Morning. We can't, we can't, we can't, we can't come out. We don't see, we don't hear here until emancipation. And Rich and Paul, when you carry, carry New Zealand to the play, make sure she wrap in her furry blanket too. Yes to the poll. I don't write that long time. You must say yes to the poll. You never say no to the poll. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, you know I like Paul. Mm -hmm. I love Pauls. All right, I'm going. All right. Bye. We have children <laughs> watching, you know, Paul and Z. Oh, jeez, and ages. Royalty Fiber says yes. They should Mary be in or on their way to school. Alistair Hart. Okay, Paul, you're saying it when they're stuck. Okay. <laughs> GNC Auto Security says yes. 
<laughs> hey, no, no, yeah. All right. We head up towards our 7 o'clock major news. AV will be in shortly. Um, again, I'll pull you. Agree with the name change to African Emancipation Day as approved by the cabinet of Trinidad and Tobago. Slick All Money right. Grip says yes. Mm hmm. All right. We could keep your votes coming, people. We're sending these you. results to the cabinet right after. Of course, uh, we give you the final results for our calls and votes after seven o'clock. But our poll will stay up on our website and on our mobile app. Yep, you should have our mobile app by now and whatever platform you're on, just look for Power 102 Digital and you will get it. All right. Okay. Desmond says yes. Cohen Duke says yes. All right. So let's get into our seven o'clock major news. Of course, uh, Evie is in. Evie, you'll have to bring that mic down a bit. Yeah, well, you, um, anyway. All right, so let's get into our Summer Talk Major News. Uh, Evie is in. This is your news bulletin from Power 102 Digital. Paho selects three persons to be part of its team to probe premature deaths of babies. Meanwhile, the NWRHA suspends the head of the Infection Prevention Control Unit attached to the Port of Spain General Hospital. The government defends foreign trips and TNT not immune to what goes on between USA and Venezuela, admits the Prime Minister. Details in a moment. This is News 2, 7 o'clock on Power 102 Digital. I'm Avril Sintel Bab. Good morning. Three persons have been identified by the Pan American Health Organization who will form part of its team, which will probe the premature deaths of eight babies at the Port of Spain General Hospital. By the end of the month, the PAHO personnel are expected to be in the country. The update was indicated by Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley while speaking at the weekly post-cabinet news briefing on Thursday. The country was urged to bear with the investigative process as the facts are acquired. Realize these people and be here in a few days before the end of this month, or by the end of this month, this is the deadline they're working with. In the meantime, the hospital is doing everything possible to eliminate the threat and the danger posed in the relevant ward. But the investigations into what has happened would be done by examining the records, and procedures, and protocols in the hospital to determine what the causes were and what recommendations and liabilities exist. Meanwhile, the Northern Northwestern Regional or Northwest Regional Health Authority has suspended the head of the Infection Prevention Control Unit attached to the Port of Spain General Hospital. In a release, the NWRHA did not name the individual, but said they shall proceed on administrative leave pending the conclusion of the relevant investigations into the demise of the seven neonates at the NICU during the period April 4th through to 9th, 2024. Sources have identified Daryl Jones as lead of the NWRHA's Infection Prevention Control Unit. The NWRHA said it may make further recommendations for suspensions if deemed necessary to advance the investigation. The authority also wishes to advise that it will make a further statement as it relates to the additional neonates for whom it has also received pre-action protocol letters. The board of directors and the management of the NWRHA reiterated its commitment to transparency and accountability in respect of this difficult and painful situation, it said, and they look forward to cooperating fully with the independent investigation. 
19 trips abroad at a cost of $10 million are being defended by the government. It reveals the travel was necessary in order to finalize key decisions relating to renewing energy contracts and other areas of national development. Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley told reporters during the question and answer period, Trinidad and Tobago will recover $18 billion because of renewed energy contracts, which have been secured. It said that India is also interested in investment locally in terms of sport development. We have been able to recover approximately $18 billion more than we would have had if we had just let the contract slide as written. And these negotiations are not just, hello, how are you doing? They are tough negotiations from people who don't want to pay to you and you want to ensure that they change their minds. So it usually takes a series of meetings. You're listening to news on Power 102 Digital to 7 o'clock. From foreign trips to energy matters, Trinidad and Tobago is not immune to what goes on between Venezuela and America. This was the response of Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley to the decision by the United States to reimpose sanctions on Venezuela's vital oil sector. The move was taken over what the U.S. administration says is the government's failure to adhere to democratic principles ahead of elections in July. Trinidad and Tobago has acquired a special two-year license which would be used to carry out development relating to the Dragon Gas Field Exploration Project. Questioned on the development by reporters, Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley said that he is focused on building meaningful relationships with both countries to promote this country's interest on a wider level. If the United States does things to Venezuela or about Venezuela, um, we can't guarantee that some of those things will not be um, detrimental to us, as in fact it has already been. But we have, we have some things in place which are not now directly affected by that. But that doesn't mean that it wouldn't be affected sometime in the future as the goalposts keep changing. I mean, the, the whole idea of, of getting Venezuela to agree to export gas to Trinidad and Tobago, that is a positive. Straight into weather news for the period today till midnight. Trinidad and Tobago, variably cloudy conditions with light to moderate showers and the medium chance of a few heavy showers or thunderstorms. Nighttime initially fair, becoming partly cloudy with a few showers. There's a medium chance of isolated early morning heavy showers and thunderstorms. Gusty winds and street or flash flooding are possible near heavy showers or thunderstorms. There's also a moderate concentration of Saharan dust present in the atmosphere, so persons sensitive to changes in air quality are being advised to take Take the necessary precautions. Look out for a forecast maximum temperature today of 32 degrees Celsius at Piaco International Airport and 31 degrees Celsius at Crown Point in Tobago. Currently, it's 27 degrees Celsius at Piaco and 28 degrees Celsius at Crown Point. Recapping your headlines at 2, 7 o'clock, PAHO selects three persons to be part of its team to probe premature deaths of babies. Meanwhile, the NWRHA suspends the head of the Infection Prevention Control Unit attached to the Port of Spain General Hospital. Government defends foreign trips and TNT not immune to what goes on between the USA and Venezuela, according to the Prime Minister. I'm Avril Sintel Bab. That was news to 7 o'clock. Look out for more news in detail at 12 noon today and an update at 8 o'clock this morning. For more details, log on to power102fm.com. Up to date and credible. Power 102 Digital. All right, thank you so much, Avril, for our major news. You could join Avril again at 8 o'clock for our news brief. All right. Um, of course, before we get the results of morning poll, let's take a look at what's happening on the highways and the byways. Gala Conda Connector Road. You're pretty uh, busy this morning going to Cookie. Yeah, on the Napri Mamayara Road. That is also a bit busy. Let's see. Um Taruba Link Road, getting on the ramp from the Solo on to Taruba Link Road. That's a bit heavy as well. Maribel Roundabout, Harmony Hall, going to Gasparillo. You've got it headed north. 
Um, Riverland Road to Cuba, not too bad. Leaving Cuba to, to going to the Calcutta's, you've got it. Chaguana, so Montrose Main Road, you've also got some traffic. Your traffic again uh, from Monroe Road, heading northbound to the interchange. Valencia, uh, that Valencia stretch is a bit busy. Um, Piaco to Yui, and then Curep to Port of Spain. Eastern Main Road is going to get heavier as you pass through McCoy. Lady Young Road. Yep, you got it. And of course, out of Marval and Digo Martin, pretty heavy this morning. All right. Um, all right, guys, let's see if we have any more votes coming in. Let's see. Um, Slick Money Grip says, Good morning, Evie. Shout out. Got one more from Kenny and Harlem. Kenny and Harlem. Okay, what he said? He said yes. He said yes. And see, I have got Dre. Um, Dre is saying yes. I have got um, Lennox. Good morning, Lennox. Nice photo there, bro. I like that. It's not helicopter up for sale right now, Lennox. Lennox McKnight. Yeah, nice picture on WhatsApp. I think that helicopter is up for sale. Uh, he mm -hmm. says yes. All right, so let's get the votes in. The all right, well, it's an easy it's an easy poll this morning. Yeah. You know, not all polls are easy. But this one is an easy one to take. And a pleasurable one to have. Wheels and, and Paul's head moving. And a pleasurable one to have. And our poll this morning was, do you agree with the name change to African Emancipation Day? Um, I'll, I'll simplify it that way. And all 34 of our people who voted this morning said yes. All 34 said yes. All 34. But there was, an, there was actually an abst abstention, you know. I know the, we don't record abstentions here. No, we don't. Why not? We don't. <laughs> they only recorded in the parliament. So, well, I'm going to jump out in the chat now. Watch the, it that is the business. <laughs> That's a business. <laughs> you can't jump out in the chat now. That's you a know, business. To be very honest, it doesn't make a difference to me one way or the other. Mm. You understand? Mm -hmm. No, just, just like how, let me tell you something. I am also in favor of Indian Arrival Day. You know why? It was done, it was the, the, the thought process behind the holiday was done when the Indians arrived in Trinidad and Tobago. All of a sudden, Everybody started a ball, but the Chinese arrived, and the Syrian Lebanese arrived, and this one arrived. No, it wasn't done with that in mind. Why we just play the fool in this country so, sometimes? So I, it, it does amaze me, you know. And Indian arrival day is for all East Indians, whether you're Presbyterian, Catholic, Anglican, Hindu, Muslim, but some or the other. Anyway, that's another. That's another topic. It's for all, right? And. African Emancipation Day, that's what it should have been in the first place, and that's what it is now, and I'm happy that all 34 people who voted this morning voted resoundingly yes. And people of all different races voted this morning. Sometimes people just make statements to be relevant, you know. Yeah, just, you know, you, you're going to cut for So I feel it's because he didn't come up with it. He didn't initiate it. Why you have a, why you saying no it is 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 it's not an issue and it's, it, it, okay it, even if it's not an issue is it a bad thing is it a is a is it a negative development exactly yeah, so it's not a exactly. negative development so just say you're happy now I didn't think about it but I'm happy the cabinet decided it wasn't my idea but I'm cool with it <laughs> goodness two 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 talk <laughs> <laughs> Let's say good morning, going out to Captain Ron. Captain Ron, I'm gonna read your message. I'm gonna read Captain Ron's message, right? Some of you just stay quiet. You know? <laughs> Captain Ron says, "Good morning, gentlemen. We are airborne at forty-three thousand feet, locked on and listening, heading to Atlanta." Wouldn't it be nice if the entire plane is listening to us? I don't think they can do that. Good morning, flight. <laughs> The captain, captain, captain Ron, Captain Ron, just put on your um, your your, your um, your P, what what's they call it, the PA system, and let the plane hear us just for a brief. No, moment. don't do that. It may be against FAA rules. You know, rule. oh, <coughs> you know Captain Ron. I, you know, I, I, I'm, I just got a message that two planes almost collided 
A JetBlue and a Southwest uh, Airlines plane were both given the go-ahead by air traffic control and almost collided. How is that? You be careful. He said, "Yes, we are. We all listening. Who else is? Who else is listening there, Captain Ron? The He's the captain with United okay. Airlines." So good morning, Captain coming. Ron. I, I, I hope to fly with and you one day. I'll seek, I will seek you out and try to find, because I have never visited a cockpit, and I've always wanted to. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Paul again. Paul, can't. What? It has certain words to trigger Paul. You know? Paul is in the mood this morning. It has certain words to just trigger him. You know? <laughs> I didn't see anything. I'm waiting for the phone call, sister. Oh, we started off with pool, Paul gone off. You know, Wendell's in cockpit, that's it. Paul gone through roof. What are you implying, Steve? Nothing. And the caller, save me. Save me. Good morning, caller. Hey, good morning, Paul Richard. I, good morning, I guess he's saving about you. <laughs> <laughs> Wendell. Morning, Mr. Patrick. You know, um, this conversation about the lady and the guy, the argument on the teeth and things. Rational behavior and different things, right? I was a tribute to an incident at the time where this guy and was with this lady for a little while. And they had a daughter. And they had some argument. And the lady tell the man, but I know your child. <laughs> That's a trigger, you know. Follow the man, you know. A big that creates a big bacchanal. This man was yeah. minus small. Mr. You know? Patrick, that is a trigger. That is a trigger for a lot of men. Yeah, but but I minding a child from baby. I know we have an argument over something, and the child don't get attached to you and close to you, and you trying to diss the man. Yes. Right? I ain't any man right to do what he did, but women must know where to stay when again. Involving arguments and confrontation with children who don't belong to the other party. Men do. Because men just want to tell women, hey, I know your child, don't do this, you understand? So, I want to issue. Mr. Cameron Cameron, I have a problem with Cameron long, long, long time. How many organizations in China and Tobago receive land? Did the African Committee receive land from government? I've seen everybody getting land all over the place. How you going? All right. All right. Thank you, Mr. P. Good morning. Good morning, I'm glad that the... Hold on, let me get rid of Mr. Patrick. Yeah. I did a boo-boo, but go ahead. Yes. Good morning. I am glad that the right people get sent home because I couldn't figure out how people wanted Dr. Dial thing to... Uh, resign or step down where he don't work in the place, he's not the cleaner, he don't fix the autoclave or nothing. I don't know how people think, how they jump on his back for him to go. But I'm glad that the, the right people get sent home. Nobody was sent home. Yet. We don't know that yet. Oh, okay. And they've All been right. sent on administrative leave. Dr. Daryl Jones is the person. Who was, I think, the person that the, that the E.D. Stewart and them were calling for to go, eh? To, to, to be um, suspended, not so? To be sent on leave. But they are on the right track, not the Alston, not Dr. Mm. The Alston. But he's not a doctor either. Okay, sorry. He's yeah. Not, he's I, not such he, as the Alston. Yes. Mr. Mr. The Alston. Okay. No problem. Take care. No problem. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, good morning. When no morning, sir. Um, I wonder how Dr. Mundell felt when the Prime Minister compared his trip as against those that they they made the one that cost twelve million, one trip that cost twelve million euro, one two point whatever million. I wonder how they felt. No, you know, Paula, I'll tell you something quickly, right? I, I listened to Paul and Richard on Tuesday, and Paul and them were correct in saying that that comparison will immediately start to be made. And I'm wondering if Dr. Munilal did it on purpose, because he must know that that comparison will be made in the parliament. 
that they will start talking about when the prime minister's the then prime minister's sister was was said to be a nurse and went on her trips or not they must know that he must know that so i i don't know if it's a deliberate thing too my 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 well it just goes to show anyhow down yeah because why would it be deliberate Hello, all kind of politics playing inside today is not Russian para, Russian para, and they might be coming out openly, but it have others as Russian para say. No, not Russian para. Dennis Rambley said, you know what? we need to get him in. You know what? That there is at you least half of them. You know what I'm really impressed with about you? Mm. If you not only know what's going on inside the PNM, but you also know what's going on inside the UNC. Oh, you're, yes. I mean, you're an astounding kind of guy. I have friends in the UNC too, you know. <laughs> Good morning, is, Connor. Is half of them have a problem, you know? Good morning to the panel. Morning. Good morning. Good program. First time I'm listening to your program since you're on, online. Well, thank Good you morning. so much. My name is Wendell Eversley. Hey, hey Wendell, how are you doing? Good morning. D. Wendell Eversley? Yeah. Yes, the only one. <laughs> Wendell Eversley. This, um, two things. First, I want to say I'm glad... Is now African Emancipation Day. Remember, we had Arrival Day, and they say we wanted Indian Arrival Day. And yesterday, they changed it now to they, it was Arrival Day. You now they say it was called Indian Arrival Day. I have no problem with that. Emancipation Day now is African Emancipation Day. And they say as a PNM, it's not a UN. So they say PNM is the problem, UN is not the solution. And one thing I must compliment the Prime Minister for saying yesterday is how Africans arrive here. And we cannot change it. We cannot change it. We have we 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 assessors uh, uh, came here as slaves. I, I don't know if you are paying attention to the AV oil matter coming up sometime this year. The, I'm, I'm talking about the, the one that is sued the, the opposition leader. Now, the question I want to ask is, did AV Oil sue the opposition leader as in the capacity as Kamla Posabi Sessa, or is sue in the official capacity as the opposition leader of Trinidad and Tobago? Now, there are two differences. One, she's, the, she's part of the government of Trinidad and Tobago, and if he is successful, who, as the op official opposition leader of Trinidad, who will be paying that bill? How is she part of the government of Trinidad and Tobago? She's the official opposition. The government is she's, between she's the opposition part, she's and She's part the of the governance structure of the country. Oh, she's not part of the yeah, government. So. Okay, then, Paul Richards, she's part of the government structure. So if Evois was the opposition leader, of, the official opposition leader of Trinidad and Tobago capacity, because right now we don't know. We know the matter will be up, some, it will be coming up sometime during this year. You know, that's an interesting question, um, uh, Mr. Eversley. It's an interesting question because um, I hear what Paul says, but you're right. It, the leader of the opposition is a constitutional position. Of the government. It's a constitutional position so that, so that if it is that, that that position is sued, is it that the state that plays or is it the personal... Um, personal assets of the leader of the opposition mm -hmm. is at risk. I'm not sure. It's an interesting question. So so I think you all should get some experts, some lawyers, because I listened to on another frequency where the lawyer who was representing AV, um, AV Oil, and he said the amount of money that taxpayers already have to fork out to pay because of the lies that were perpetrated by the opposition leader on a public platform. Mm. So why it is we as taxpayers always have to be called upon to pay. And I think Paul Richard as an independent... But if she, but if she, I, I would want to hazard a guess that if she did it in a personal capacity and not under... The 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 um cover of parliament. of parliament mm -hmm. that she can be held personally liable. 
if it is something what? defamatory that you have said, if it's something like that that you have said, then you can be held personally liable. I think where a leader of opposition, I'm just thinking it through, if a lead, where a leader of opposition may be protected is if it's something connected substantively to the to the remit of the post that is required and a decision made specifically in that on a public platform as the leader of the opposition and you say something that's defamatory, I think you're personally liable if that's where AV oil is going. Right, and I, and, I, and I support the point you make there, Richard. I support, and, and I will ask the independent senator, if he, when he goes to parliament, if he will raise that issue. Because that, that is something that bothers me, because I am I tired of seeing Absolutely not. All the government have been paying, um, the, the taxpayers have been called to pay a lot of um, monies when these monies could have gone into the development where we see a lot of um, problems in our country facing today. Right? And every day people protesting and we don't know where to turn. Right? So I would like to, you ought to call in some sort of experts and let me hear who really have to fund that bill when that matter come up during this, sometime during this year. Yeah. The proposition doesn't hold water because if we were to consider the argument that when Mrs. Pasal Bissessa made the statement in the, in the public domain on a public platform as Kamala Pasal Bissessa slash opposition leader and the state is to be party to defending it, it would be the attorney general who has to defend it. Yeah. So the, the whole line of, of contemplation doesn't make sense to me. Once she said it in a personal capacity, or a public outside, yeah. outside and of she, the protection of yeah. parliament, she is personally liable, which would hold to which would hold true for the prime minister too, if he made something in a personal capacity mm -hmm. um outside of the precincts of parliament. And, and, and apart yeah. from that, as, as just about said, and if and if she was acting in a delivery inside the parliament, it is protected by parliamentary privilege. Yeah. So but friend Mark Collins is basically saying what you guys are saying. He has a misspelling though on the name, but outside of that he has um, he's basically saying the same thing. You know, he misspelled and, and, the name. And, and in the role of opposition leader, there are no decisions that you can take that would put the state at risk. Because you are not the part of the executive. Well, I don't know. You you can make certain. You could be held for certain constitutional decisions that you made with regard in conjunction with the the prime minister. If somebody well, wanted, if, to, if, if somebody wanted if, a super example for judicial review of a decision that was made, you would be. The, you would be part to the action. If if there was a uh, um uh common vote on something that they both participated in and agreed on. No, but I mean, there are certain positions, for example, where you have to consult with mm -hmm. or it's the prime minister and the leader of the opposition, depending on how it's phrased. So I'm saying something coming out of that duty could theoretically go to court. Yeah. I, yeah. That, we're just speaking theoretically. Because it's a joint decision and a joint yeah, And the office of the attorney general would have to protect both positions. Both parts, I'm position, thinking, and, the positions yeah. of the state. Yeah, these politicians not learning. They're not learning. See, I don't know. There is something about Dr. Keith Rowley. The more you attack him, as especially personally, is he is he worse it gets for you? I don't know when they will learn. Just wait on 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 on, on the man. Does he, does he, Apparently, the the other issue that's uh, been published in the Express, uh, despite a comment that, that I believe was attributed to the Minister of Health uh, after the pre-action protocol letter was sent on behalf of some of the parents of the children who died, the neonates who died, that I do believe I remember the, the Minister of Health indicating, or, or the attorneys for the, administer, the, the state indicating that the, the records of the children would have been forwarded to the parents. That was a story that was published earlier in the week. But apparently the, 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 the medical records have not yet been released to the parents and their attorneys. Well, I think in, in that particular story where um um Paul, if I'm if I'm correct, um 
when we read that story or we referenced that story, it was that the parents had made an FYA request, not so? That and also directly to the Ministry of Health because the, the records can uh, concern their children and they want the information because it is their right to have information, medical information. The children are their wards. You understand? Legally. And if something happens to your child, you have a right or yourself, you have a right to that information. Yeah. So you'd have to go through F freedom. Yeah, you should have to file that. for that. But yeah. if it comes to that, they can do that too. But they can ask directly yeah, the Ministry of Health to I want my the record yeah. that if relates you, to my you child. Are entitled to it, then I'm yeah, saying, entitled I'm saying legally. If, a, if a state agency is resistant to giving you information for whatever reason, mm -hmm. the FIO, the FYA um request protects you in terms of giving you access to that invitation in a structured legislative and, way. And I know what's going to happen. They're going to say, well, the investigation into the matter is continuing, so we do have all the information related to your child's death, but you can give me a preliminary report yeah. and indicate that when more information comes, I will give you the full report. Yep. But I think it's almost unconscionable that my child has passed and I have no information, official information, whatever, as to what happened to my child. Something wrong with that. Hmm. And when people make requests under um, the Freedom of Information Act, an agency can't question as to what you want the information for. They cannot question I that. Think they're very simple Either they accede to which... the request or they don't accede to the request. And if they're not acceding to the request, they have to give reasons why. And, the, and, and the very slim parameters within which it's been denied, national security yeah, interests, etc. Yeah, and if it is that it is denied, you still have to inform the the applicant that they have the right to go to the office of the ombudsman to have a review of that decision. Who's the ombudsman in Trinidad and Tobago now? You haven't heard about that I, person. I, yeah, it's right. retired justice. It's retired justice. What's his name again? I appeared before him fairly recently. Yeah. Yeah. I had to I had to appear before him. I was summoned. Um so the retired ombudsman. Who's the ombudsman? Retired Justice. Oh God, what's his name? I don't know why I'm thinking I'm Evans right Reese, but he's he has to be about three hundred years. No, 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 old. no, it's not Evans Reese, it's retired justice. Wow. But, was Did I just my age there? You know, but but when you think about it, yeah, it's already extremely traumatic that you lost your child under whatever circumstances. Yeah. And some some of these children died as early as late February. Some of them, the, the, the ones that have been recently added to the list, who died from Rats the Man Man Al Joseph. Right. The the ones who died in early um in early April, and imagine that. Okay, they will they will have a verbal debriefing about. We unfortunately we have to inform you, child is dead, and you're asking for the, your child's medical records, and they yet to be delivered to you. Yeah. Justice retired Justice Rajmanal Joseph. Right. But it's a name. It's a name. I, I don't know. Even when he was a before yeah, he retired. And retired Justice. So mm. I did appear before him. Very um. Very thank, thank you, Nigel Campbell. I don't know if people make that mistake. The, the leader of the opposition is not part of the government. The opposition leader's position is part of the governance structure of the country, yeah. not the I, government. I, I, I think you're correct, Paul. Well, you did correct him and said and say that governance, and he, not and he government. still ignored me. Mm. That's all right. He's a Wendell. Yeah. Good morning, caller. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Zena. Good morning, my love. I greet everyone. Um, the, um, what else? Yes, me more. Good morning, Fluffy. Um, I I um. I will think I ignore you, you know. I call to make a point right now. You could yes, never ignore me. No. I know how to um, get your attention, you know. One thing is get your attention all the time. We know that the, the I think every the majority of people will know that they're part legally part of the um the governing shop here, but the, that arm is the, the arm to oppose everything. Not it's, it's, not, it's not actually, that's not what it's yeah. intended for, you know. Well, that's what them say they're going to do. 
There's nothing they would agree to. It's that not is not the intention of that, that position, you know, the, as the yeah, Constitution is framed. Yeah, okay. I know that. They should be told. They should be reminded of that. But they say that there's nothing the government is going to agree to. So, as a matter of fact, I mean, go further with them on that. Um, I wanted to say that, um, you see, this whole situation now with the babies, I think the, even the, the parents, they need to seek some counseling. That is the, 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 the important part of the story. And let them, let the um, investigation go through and let them fix the files and everything. And I think, I know they will get it. By law, they have to get it. But you see, some people feel want to rush, rush to certain things. It don't happen so. And I realized that they offered counseling by the Northwest Regional Health Authority. And apparently from, I hope I got it right, that the, the, um, the, the lawyers let them refuse that because they want the government, the Northwest Regional Health Authority, to pay for private um, counseling. We see difference. Because many of the people working in those places are, 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 are very qualified people, and some of them had a private practice. So what's the difference? That's just a cause for the confusion. Well, that's it. Well, I don't know why they're just the choice. The people are in, a, in an extremely distressed state. We can't dictate to them what they should do and what they shouldn't do. Exactly. Well, well, and why stop them from the counseling? I think that was the best thing that, that could that have happened. That is their advice, yeah. and that is what they chose to act on, and that's fine. We can't dictate to them how they should act, what they should take, what they shouldn't take. Yeah. You just know when they shouldn't dictate people, but you just feel you could dictate people everywhere, everywhere. I only want to dictate you. Your point of view. You understand? Mm -hmm. You're very sharp. You talk about other people this morning. I find you, you really, really sharp on the take this morning. I was, I'm always sharp on the take. You I change the color cup, you're drinking your coffee, and you have a big green cup. What and you the, change it to this morning? You know, the only I, color cup I do have is a red cup, so I'll have to get one to balance it off. This one has mm -hmm. a little yellow in it, and I know you don't notice well, that already. I was personally... <laughs> Get you a, a very large red cup and a blanket to go with it. <laughs> Keep the blanket. <laughs> you are the, you are the blanket. You are the blanket. Hi. All right. I don't need no blanket once you're there. You fluffy enough to keep me warm and satisfied. Ooh. I remember I used to have a PNM mug with the PNM emblem on it, logo on it at four one or two at the studio there now. Um, and the morning when Dr. Rowley came, he refused to drink any other cup. He said, I want that cup to drink. I said, But that is my cup. <laughs> the Prime Minister wants to drink out of your cup. Yeah. He wants to drink it out that, of your cup. That's after that is after he eat out of my bag of plums, my bowl of plums. Didn't then, then, then you lose that cup eventually, Wendell? Eventually it disappeared. Yeah, I think somebody mash it up. You know, he sends his peeps to go, go in the power one or two kitchen and get that I, cup. I don't know what, what to do with it. We have a call. My cup disappeared. Oh. Did not run it over. Good morning, caller. Somebody take know. that cup and they pelt it across that kitchen. Good morning, caller. Good morning, Mr. Ah. Paul. Good morning, my good dear. Morning, How are you this morning? And good morning, good. Richard. Paul, you are good morning, good morning. Sorry? Oh. You are very, very provocative. I am. I am actually. I fully agree with that. Imagine Brendan is admitting on international radio and digital platforms that the Prime Minister drank out of his cup and ate it out of his food. Um, that's, a very that's a very provocative statement in and of Did the Prime Minister bring breakfast that day, Wendell? He, he had breakfast brought in first, you remember? Yeah, yeah that's he, what he yeah. said. He brought breakfast first. Yes. Don't worry, he's coming back just now. I'm making, I'm making <laughs> uh, interventions <laughs> that he joined us soon. So, I am, um, this one is Paul. I agree totally with that, Paul. I agree up with the name, Chief Harry. And, you know, by the way, Wendell, you said that uh, Mr. Capron. Catherine Cambon is no longer the chairman of the Emancipation Support Committee. Richard said so. 
Who have changed him? Who when he got changed from No, they listed him? they listed him as former chairman of no, that's he, all I know. I don't, I don't know if he was chairman for life. I was just I would just read article. Yeah. Well, I was chairman me. for life, you know. So I was wondering because well, I that's how the media is. treating him because they're going back to him for everything. I, but that is it so. But you know something, I watched Mr. Cam last night and you know, okay, even though Mr. Dr. Rowdy changed it because he specifically said why, he keeps harping on why, why. Everybody knows that, this, that. And then I was getting back because Nisha was not going, um, telling him the reason why Dr. Rowdy said he changed it. And because he was going on and on and on and on, she ended up telling him, well, the Prime Minister said X, Y, Z, you know, that was his reason. Yeah, he wasn't given Desha a chance to intervene. Yeah. But he was so adamant that it didn't make a difference. What is he said? Everybody knows African. But I can tell you, there are callers on Power 102 during the charge program who won't agree with that, right? I know my right. That's all right. <laughs> so I think I totally agree. And I totally agree also with Indiana Rivalry. What is was, the harm in adding African to African emancipation? emancipation. It, but what is the harm? Who does it offend? It doesn't offend anyone. Exactly. So when you talk, what I, is the issue I, I about? Can't, no, I, can't, I can't say it doesn't offend anyone. Eh? No, it, yeah, it that clearly is, does. Well, it clearly does. does. Mm -hmm. There are people called when I listen to the next program after this, we'll find fault with that name change. What are you saying? I I after nine o'clock this morning. So we don't know. <laughs> and my other thing is this. So wait now, when is the cyber security in the TTPS giving us a report on the school um the emails that the, the lunatic sent to schools? How did it take us so long to um, get that? Madam, you know what you know what I've started to do? I've created an Excel sheet and I've started mm -hmm. to, on a week by week basis, document all the investigations the police doing. Hmm. But that takes so long. And whether it closed or it ain't closed. Yeah, because we, I mean, we need to hear that because from what I read, students and teachers still not 100% in school. So I wonder how long that will continue. I mean, there might be no, no um, security risk at the moment. But then we need to know, and police are supposed to dedicate this thing because this is important, you know? So everything's so late in this country, that's why things go so wrong. Ms. Dabody, yeah. Ms. Dabody, yes, I have some okay. advice for you. Would you like go me ahead. to share my advice with you? Sure. Pray. Not even I take advice from, but go ahead. Pray. 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 It's talking to Hulan, all right? Pray. <laughs> Okay, no window start at eh? So anyway, Paul and Richard and Wendell and um I by the way I want to go to the play this week for a change on Sunday evening. So I should be there. Yeah, I think I'll I'll What's go on Sunday. Sunday. I'll go on Saturday. Sunday. 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 I will go. So you all have a wonderful weekend. All right. Have a wonderful right. right. Good morning, morning Paula. Wait for next month to come. Good morning. Hi, good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Morning, New York. It's been a while. Good morning. Um, I just have just two short points in reference to this um, situation with the babies, you know, who died. You know, I am, and like the Prime Minister said yesterday, you know, I mean, they, 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 they had a very good rating in terms of infant mortality rate. And here comes that situation, and I mean, it just messed it up. So I was wondering whether, like, um, if Trinidad, like I work in the public health system in New York City, and we are part of what you call the Joint Commission. I mean, these are people, they are like auditors, they come in and they evaluate the kind of service that we give, I mean, and, you know, everything that has to do with compliance. So I'm wondering if Trinidad is part of that. You know, maybe if one of you guys would um, Google the Joint Commission, you will, you will see what they do, the kind of work that they do, because... My daughter, she specialized in neonatal nursing working in the Virgin Islands and Croy. And she was saying to me that um, if you have one infection, what they do is they move every all the infants out to another ward and then they, 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 they how do they call it? They disinfect the place and 
they keep the place closed for a couple of days before they could get, get back in. And they also have inspectors coming in to make sure where everything is done. So I'm not sure that is a practice that the Trinidad will really want to adopt, you know, because I am feeling it for the parents. <laughs> I mean, I as a grandfather of three kids, I, I mean, I am really feeling it for the people, man, honestly. But I, that's all I have to contribute. And God bless you guys. I'm, Thank yeah. you. Have a good weekend. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Be yeah, safe. Thank you so much. Yeah. Of course, the weekend begins tonight, people, at the second half to mid. Well, no, that was yesterday. That was yesterday. The weekend has begun good. because it's Friday. Yeah. Yeah. Good morning, caller. Good morning, at class. Yeah, all my lines are lit up. Thank God I have free calls from Amplia. Oh, God. Anyway, <laughs> let me move on. Um, I don't know why women like to tell a man after five, ten years a child is not his own. I don't know what did this try to achieve by that. That is so stupid. Look, I just can't understand it. Anyway, let me make my contribution. I listen. One most powerful weapon is a mountain. Always was, always will be. Yes, yes. The wreck is right, Wendell. Well, I should say um, Tom, not mouth. <laughs> Um, I listened to Eddie Stewart on, he was like Gary Griffith on every radio and TV station. And he said something about some machine wasn't working for a whole year. I, I can't remember the name he called. And I am saying, did anybody, because you need to have information, letter showing, you, as a nurse on the ward, if this machine is not working and is crucial to saving lives or, or crucial to the babies, have any of them written to the CEO? Because first, you'll have to let your manager, CEO, whoever it be, know X machine is done. And you need to keep... I remember having a boss, she said, public servants don't like to write. She says, so when, my mother always say black and white don't hold up in court, right? I mean, not black and white. Word of mouth don't hold up in court. Black and white. So if you never wrote to the CEO, you need to have, because it is your turn saying that, how long they complain. You all need to let the authorities know, whoever, manager, CEO, this machine is not working. You back it up with letter number two. So when the thing hit the fan, you could show, I sent um, information, I wrote to the CEO, let him know this machine is now working for how long, and this is the result. You can't come now. I, I want to assume that a hospital, yeah. in, in, a, in a hospital setting, there is uh -huh. some sort of workflow for reporting when something is not working. Exactly. And if, and I if don't know if an institution does not have a workflow for reporting yes. incidents or reporting malfunctioning equipment, then something is wrong with the institution. Exactly. How come yeah. is only the government institution, CT scanner working, MRI, and all this nonsense? How come you as well, I said it the other day, you don't get that Sinclair Medical West show because they want their machines to be working for when the patients come, they could get it. I, I or you could remember John Rahel, when he was Minister of Health, he started something where whenever the X-ray machine, MRI, CT scan not working, send them to the private institutions. And my mother was a was Benny my mother benefited from that when my parents got in an accident there down on the boulevard and she could not get the CT scan and the doctor thanked God for him. An African doctor, he said, I am not discharging your mother. Or she alone was hospitalized until I get a CT scan down and they sent her Sinclair Medical. Oh, God, man. What it right. is with the government institution? Management. Management. Come on, man. I've fed up at this nonsense, man. You all have a wonderful weekend. Thank you, Diggo Martin. Thanks, I want a buddy. A buddy <laughs> whispered to me something about the Porter's Spain Corporation. I'll wait to see if it if it if it's true. But and Royal Bank, can you to... whisper to us now? No, nah, I can't whisper. Royal oh, Bank, they need to chat. Royal Bank, they need chat. to fix that ATM in St. James. Goodness. First to begin with, it's so easily accessible to anybody, whether you're whether you're, you're homeless or you have a home. It's easily accessible. And then when you go in there, your envelopes disappear into Netherlands sometimes. It is a it, 
close it down or fix it. Right. Good morning, the caller. The machines that they destroyed yes, 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 one time. Um, I listen. I listen. You all speaking this morning about the issue with the child that got beheaded, and that is exactly if you remember. That is exactly what I called and said. And Paul described the whole. That lady didn't have a clue of what she was dealing with. She normalized everything. She didn't have a that everything was passing over that woman. I listened that everything was passing over that woman. Is she you would think? not have the level of intelligence to understand what was happening. Second, I get great offense because I'm sure I listen to you all discuss something there just now, but if the opposition leader have to pay for that statement, you tell me I had to pay for that? No, How was the inference? I really, I really can't. It was not inference. It was when the MSP trying to understand it. But he was not, asking a question. He was asking a question, basically. But we didn't make a statement. He was asking a question. You were seeking clarity on the issue. I realize you all try to 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 to, to kind of it, it didn't really finalize as to as to what why I kind of uh, 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 I, kind, I think it's kind of finalized. We said that if you do, um, so if you make I guarantee you, at the very a surprising decision you can that you that, can't that is not the case. Who are you all talking at the same time? That that is not the case. That is not the case. Okay, no problem. And the thing with African Emancipation Day, I think that within African Emancipation Day, it adds both magnitude and direction to the, to the statement. Both magnitude and that it is at the, one of the most... Let's describe the velocity, velocity so magnitude. Who have a problem Anybody have a problem with that? No. African, African Emancipation Day. this is why I do understand what the big hullabaloo is about. <laughs> Pardon me? What is the hullabaloo about? I mean, I, I agree with you, Paul. But I don't want to know. Anybody any yeah. harm. I don't see what... All right. I don't understand what the hullabaloo is about with, with, with them with that. All right. Thank you, caller. Thank you. All right. Lots of calls. Thing you want. Some people just want something to talk about for the next three days. That's all. Thank good morning. Gentle, gentlemen, good morning. 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 Would it be okay if I deviate from the present trend of, of, of the discussion? Yes, you may. Well, make it... Uh, quickly. Okay. Um, I'm wondering if it is the traffic management branch of the Ministry of Works and Transport can make an intervention in terms of public education as it relates to the tooling roundabouts that we, we have presently, especially at um, West Mall and the one in QREP. You know, over the years, in the past, we normally used to have single lane roundabouts, but in recent times, in the last few years, we have gone to these two lane roundabouts, and the one in Westmall in particular, several accidents have uh, occurred there. It seems that the, the public in general is not fully aware how to use these roundabouts correctly. And totally agree with you there. Um, the reason why I brought up this is because yesterday I, um, a vehicle collided with me um, at the Kedona roundabout. And how I have tried to reason with the, the other driver that, you know, you were incorrect to come across from the right lane into the second, into the, the, the left lane to go down to the southern main road. They were just adamant that um, I was wrong negotiating the roundabout and it had to go to the police to make a report and then have to go through the insurance and when you, you, if you have the time and you just park aside and, and observe how the people are using these roundabouts, you realize that it is sheer madness. People try to cut across you from the right lane to go across to their destination, in particular at West Mall. Yeah, it's, it's when, a roundabout. I don't think a lot of Trinidadians or percentage of Trinidadians don't know how to navigate a roundabout. They always you know, go in the left lane, they want to go right and yeah, by you know why? And I, I just come out of Europe. Before you approach that roundabout, there are signs telling you which lane to get in. I don't know when we're going to get get hit with signs. Signage is a massive problem. Signage, we have a problem right, with signage. You, you can't leave it up to people to, to you. know I, everything. I, I agree with you totally, Wendell. That you, signs. That you have to, even, even an, an old, and I use the word old um, in terms of describing the infrastructure, even if, you, if you're heading 
west on the Churchill Roosevelt Highway. Mm -hmm. And you're heading into San Fernando. And you veer left to pass in front of Bamboo there. Yeah. The turn off onto that southern highway is still not clear. No? Yes. No. You have to know. Sense. You have you to know listen. that that is the turn off. Yeah. How difficult is it to put up a sign that says to San Fernando so that you, you are clear? Yeah. I'm sure people sometimes go straight and end up into the Mount Hope heading back into Mount Hope uh, because they missed the turn off. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because it is not clear. We don't do proper signage. And you are here. right that for, for those kind of roundabouts, mm -hmm. there should be signage before that says, um, keep in the left lane if you're bearing, for example, that West Mall roundabout. Uh -huh. If you're heading into Diggle Martin, keep it to the left lane. To the left, yes. For the West, keep to the right. Uh -huh. You know, that sort of thing. Yeah. I mean, for the East, because you're heading East. Yes, East, yes. You know, so, so things like that, that helps make the navigation easier mm -hmm. for the for the the driver who's driving on the, the respective roads. They make it very clear in Europe which lane long before which lane yeah. you should go into. Long before. Get in your lane so so you'll know exactly where so you don't you wouldn't have that kind of cutting people. across. You know because some, uh, the, 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 the call is right. Sometimes yeah. you are thinking that you can continue and mm -hmm. all of a sudden somebody's can cutting across. Yeah. And you're like, wait, what are they doing? Yeah. But in the wrong lane. Yeah. <laughs> That's what your, your mind goes. They're Put in the, the wrong signs. lane. Don't but... leave it up to people. Put the signs up. Gentlemen. Yes, good morning. Yes. I want to make two quick points. Um, I was this is four right. time you call in the show for the day. Oh, what wrong That's with that? Right. Have a limit. What wrong with that? She allowed it. I am I, um, you all distract me when I call, so sometimes it's after I remember. The outside what man is resident on the show. Listen, listen to me. The, each hospital, I would um, think, has a hospital administrator. And I would think before anything even reach the Minister of Health, what is the purpose of the hospital administrator? I would believe is to make sure that everything is functioning in, in his um in his hospital. So that is one. Find out the the, the um Paul, you would know what to do. Find out what are the, the, the um duties of the hospital administrator. And two, I want you to note I hear you say you're keeping a log. I want you to note that um we have not heard anything about the backyard. The body that dug up from the backyard and any further thing on that. They let go the parents and apparently everybody cherry merry and we're not hearing I anything. Warn, Zina, I warn all you, that's the end of that story. Do I you want to um, Zina? Yes. Do you want to help me keep the log? That's no problem at all. You know? The last we heard with that incident I is that they were doing results uh, of a DNA. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm Zina seeing people, the, I'm Zina seeing people on the, the chat. Zina I'm seeing the people on the chat. Yeah. Thank and you, Zina. Media. No, no, Talking no, about this. What I'm saying is that since with the the death of the um half of the sex triplets that were born 11 years ago, the story about Dr. Petronella Manning Allen came up. Do I apparently there are no. Um, neonatal nurses in Trinidad and Tobago. And that is what I think the Nurses Association should concentrate on. Right? Mm -hmm. We need people like that. And I don't think when these things come up, I wonder if they ever call in Dr. Manning, Petronella Manning Allen, to hear well, what, what can be done and to solicit help. And it's, it's a long, long, long time now. They have to concentrate on new needs and nurses. Well, leave, leave, doc, leave Dr. Man in our, That lady is enjoying yeah, retirement. You know, trust me. She's enjoying it. Just before it. we close, I'm seeing all sorts of chat posts and social media posts talking about this announcement of African before emancipation. Oh, I thought they were talking about love is a walk. Is a, Sorry. Is a, um, a political distraction. Is that red herring? You know, is you all making making it a distraction? You know, exactly. Um, it I should know. not even be an issue. Yeah, you but... all are the ones making it an issue. Well, have a good weekend. Be well, safe. Well, 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 Paul, the, the the prime minister, no no lesser person than the prime minister, 
declare the change of the name. So that gives it, it thanks and move on. Exactly. Oh, I'm saying it, it gives it a certain amount of importance and it will, will of course, See, raise political issues that people are going to discuss. On. That, Have a great weekend, BC. That's just how human beings are going to be in this space. Mm. Richard, you end. Folks, have a wonderful weekend. Um, look out for the children and remember to let go and let God. Right. So, of course, um, despite all that goes on and all that is stressful in your life, yeah. there is a reprieve and it's called Love is a Walk. Yeah. You have 30 on, seconds, Richard. And it's on Cipriani College this weekend, Saturday at 8.30 and Sunday at 6.30. That's tomorrow and Sunday. Tickets available at the Cipriani College box office from 12 noon to 6 p.m. daily. Get your tickets early. It has incredible word of mouth. You can check RS, RR Productions Theatre on social media. Tickets also available at K-Squared, Fashions Westmoreland, Eastgates, Creme Fresh in Brentwood Mall, Shagonas, Alex Tronic, Sarima, Jabili Rawin, Tunapuna, Sharple Auto Services, and Antoni's Florals in uh, Saint in Valpark Shopping Plaza, as well as Crosby's in St. James. Get your tickets. We're looking forward to two fantastic shows. You could see all of the reviews from people who have attended the play. I mean, endless reviews <laughs> on social media. RSRR Productions Theatre. Have a fantastic Friday. The weekend has begun, people. Enjoy. <laughs>